What's up YouTube? Leon here and today I'm going to be talking about Sekiro. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, the new From Software game. And it's probably the most divisive title in the From Software's Souls-like action RPG genre. But before I get into the game, let's quickly talk about the port. For me, the port has been very solid. I haven't had any crashes or anything like that. The options that the port gives you is your standard stock PC port. Nothing crazy and nothing too light. It gives you all the basic options. One option that's missing for me is Borderless. I really like running my games in Borderless and this game doesn't have it for some reason. It's a little weird. And another weird faulty thing with the port is controller support. If you have your Xbox controller, it's perfectly fine. It'll run really well out of the box. If you have a PS4 controller like I do, you have to go into the Steam settings and mess with it. For some reason the gyro is mapped to mouse and I just pretty much un unmarked that. It's a little weird and uh, it, it works. You just gotta mess with it for PS4 controllers. But other than that, the port is very solid. Before I talk about the game itself, I want to say spoilers because for these From Software games, I am very much a person who respects the game and it being fresh for people. And Sekiro especially, I think, should be very fresh when you go and play it. Um, so if you, if you already own the game and you haven't touched it yet and you want to look at videos and see what people think, or if you want to uh, watch a video and see if you want it yourself, I would say just try and keep the spoilers light. I'm going to try to keep the spoilers light, but I'm also going to spoil a lot of gameplay ideas, I guess. So if that's something that you want to keep fresh, just go and buy it and play it yourself. It's a pretty fun game. But for people on the fence, I guess this is for you. Alright, so Sekiro. I don't think I have to go into deep detail about the differences and similarities between the Souls games and Sekiro, so I'm just gonna do a very quick uh, just checklist of the similarities. Uh, we know how Souls works by now, so I don't really have to explain that part of it. So the world building, quest, exploration, and the penalty for death are the same to an extent. The only difference here is when you die in Sekiro, you lose half your EXP and your money and you can't get it back, so that's a little bit different from your typical Souls game. Another thing is the the world of Sekiro. Unlike a, your Dark Souls or your Bloodborne, the world feels a lot more alive. There are enemies and characters that talk. You can eavesdrop on these characters. Whenever you fight bosses, they talk to you, they have banter. There's just a lot more things going on and it feels more alive. It feels less isolated, like the Souls games do, it doesn't feel like you're completely alone in this game. Another change is that this game is single player only. There is no online component or anything like that in, in Sekiro. And the two biggest differences I would say is there is no character creation. You play as the character Wolf. You are a fixed character and he talks. He talks surprisingly, it's pretty crazy. And you actually follow a bit more of a storyline unlike your Souls games where you're kind of free to do whatever you want. And finally, this game is a focused action game. It's not like a hybrid action RPG, it is pretty much a straight action game. So with the differences and similarities out of the way, let's talk about the gameplay. If I were going to choose a game that Sekiro feels very close to, I'll have to say it's fairly close to Ninja Gaiden. The, the three major mechanics in Sekiro are parrying, posture, and death blows. Parrying is done by just blocking an enemy's attack right before it hits you. Posture kind of acts like a new stamina system. Whenever you block attacks, your posture goes up. Whenever you parry attacks, your enemy's posture goes up. And once the posture meter maxes out, Either you or the enemy gets their guard broken. And this is where Sekiro's final mechanic comes in and it's death blows. Similar to 
Ninja Gaiden's executions or obliteration techniques. A death blow just means that you can kill enemies outright. And it feels really damn good. But bosses and mini bosses, you'll have to death blow them multiple times. You can think of these as the next health bar or phase of a boss. It's indicated by these little red dots at the top of their health bar. So from the title, Shadows Die Twice, it's also a gameplay mechanic. The wolf has his own little pips above his health bar. Whenever his health goes all the way down, you can come back as an extra life, which is an interesting mechanic. I know a lot of people were kind of iffy on the idea, especially from the first gameplay reveal of Sekiro, uh, being able to come back in the middle of a fight is just something that makes it sound a lot easier, but From Software has a pretty good knack for making fairly challenging games, especially on the first run through. Another big mechanical change from the previous titles is the movement system. In Sekiro, movement is a lot quicker, it flows a lot better, it also makes exploration a lot more fun, especially with the new grapple mechanic. Wolf can grapple from building to building, kind of makes him feel a bit like a Japanese Spider-Man, but there are good and bad things about the grapple mechanic. Of course, the cool thing is the freedom of movement. You can actually grapple in and out of combat. It just makes the gameplay a lot more free-flowing. But the bad thing is the grapple sometimes just doesn't work or it locks onto something you don't necessarily want to grapple onto. It's a new complex mechanic and I can understand why it isn't as fleshed out as the other mechanics in this game. It's not a totally bad idea. It just needs a little bit more polish. So this next part kind of comes back to From Software's roots, and that is the Tenchu series. I do believe Sekiro is some sort of new rebirth or re-envisioning of the Tenchu series, so there's a bit of a stealth mechanic in Sekiro. Stealth does play a pretty big role in this game, in that you being able to assassinate the most dangerous part of a group of enemies just makes your life a lot easier. You can even stealth attack certain mini bosses and be able to only deal with one health bar instead of two health bars. It's not a complete stealth game, but stealth just makes things easier. And again, assassinating people just feels really good in Sekiro. So let's get into the more controversial stuff of Sekiro, and I'll have to say it's just a weird way the developers threw difficulty in the player's face. While the design of the bosses and mini bosses are pretty cool, it's just the punishment and reward that is a little bit lopsided. Let's go back to the posture mechanic, the idea of pairing a enemy's attack and them gaining posture damage. Whenever you do that to a boss, it kind of feels like chipping at them. It doesn't feel like you're really making progress during that boss fight. Posture and HP kind of work hand in hand in this game. The more HP an enemy has, the faster their posture recovers. But the lower their HP, the slower their posture recovers. So you pretty much have to deal with two health bars essentially. So if you thought chipping a boss's health away in a Souls game took forever, Sekiro will feel even more so. Not only that, whenever you get hit in Sekiro, you really feel it. And I mean, really feel it. It only takes about one to two hits to kill you in Sekiro. Because of this, it kind of limits experimentation during boss fights. There's only one real way to deal with bosses, and that's really just to hit and run. The game really forces you to memorize a boss's moveset, and for some people, that's not really their idea of fun. Even when progressing through Sekiro and building your HP bar and posture bar, it kind of gives an illusion of progress. The enemies as well kind of scale with that. See, even towards the end of the game, you're still getting two shot by bosses. It just doesn't feel like you're getting any stronger than you were at the beginning of the game. 
So even though there are some problems with this game, overall I think this game is pretty damn good. It kind of feels like a PS2 game in a sense. A single player linear action game. I mean that in the best possible way. Just like with any other From Software game, this game has a gorgeous art direction. From Software is just great at crafting fully realized worlds. And the difference between any of their other games and Sekiro is that this has a very Japanese aesthetic to it. The satisfying gameplay is also a big plus. That's because of the overall improvement in animations. The jump between Dark Souls 3 and Sekiro is actually a huge improvement. The punchiness of the death blows, the feel of the parries, has really great feedback for the player. But even though I've seen it over a hundred times, it still feels really good to execute enemies. So if you're looking for something a little bit different than your standard Souls affair, Sekiro is a pretty good departure from that. But if you're looking for more Souls, you're probably better off playing a different game. I would very much recommend this game for anyone who's looking for a new Tenchu or a new Ninja Gaiden game. I would have to say From Software did it again. I really think they hit it home with this game, especially in the gameplay department. Before I close off this video, I'm going to throw a few tips and things that I found out while playing Sekiro. So first tip is Fuzzy Guard. What Fuzzy Guard is, is pretty much repeated guards. It's not necessarily mashing the guard button, but tapping the guard button in a way where you're always guarding, but also being able to parry certain attacks. If you're up against something that you don't know the move setup, try Fuzzy Guarding it. When you fuzzy guard it, you can kind of try and match the rhythm of whatever uh, string that this enemy is throwing at you. While you shouldn't rely on fuzzy guarding all the time, it's just a good way to keep you safe and to avoid unnecessary damage. There is a skill tree in Sekiro, and if you were wondering what two skills you should get at the start of the game, those two should be Mikiri Counter and Chasing Slice. Ikiri counter gives you a counter towards thrusting attacks, while chasing slice is an additional attack after certain prosthetic moves, like the shuriken or firecracker. So here's a tip for the Mikiri counter. If you're having trouble with the timing, you can actually dodge into the Mikiri counter. When you know the enemy is doing a thrusting attack, just press neutral B, your character will dodge forward, so you can pretty much mash B during the animation. Just be aware though, at the very end of your dodge, you can't Mikiri counter. There's some sort of recovery where you can't actually do the counter. The counter window is actually very generous, so don't be afraid to dodge into your counters. Requires just a little bit of timing, but once you get it down, you can pretty much counter every thrusting attack you see. And here's the really big skill, Chasing Slice. Whenever a boss whiffs a big move, but you're kind of too far away to punish it, use Chasing Slice. It's a good way to keep on the pressure and to keep on the posture meter for a boss. If you see an enemy with a ranged weapon, go ahead and Chasing Slice them. If you see an enemy trying to recover their posture, Chasing Slice them. It's just a really good flexible tool that can be used in a variety of situations. And that's it for all the tips and things that I found out, so if you have any extra tips, go ahead and leave it in the comments, I guess. And uh, how do you guys feel about Sekiro? Do you hate it? Do you like it? Do you think it's alright? Do you think it's the best From Software game? Go ahead and tell me in the comments, I guess. This is Leon from Humans Plays, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Peace, peace.